Well, good afternoon to you. And unlike some of uh, my uh, colleagues who do lives, I don't wait for the room to populate. We're going to start now. And I'm thankful that you're going to join us here, perhaps uh, live, uh, or perhaps by uh, watching the video a little bit later from now. It's five o'clock. It's Friday. And I'm happy to be talking to you live here on Facebook for TGI Faith, TGIF. I hope you've had a great week. I'm here in my home in Winkler. I'm thankful to have my home, especially on a, a weather-challenging day like today. As the rain is pouring down, and we wonder how much more farmers need today. Uh, certainly, the ground is well-saturated, but we're thankful for the weather that the Lord gives us. And uh, in today's episode, I want to talk about something that's been on my heart. And let me say as a disclaimer that what I'm sharing is from my heart, and hopefully it'll resonate with your heart. Because as we journey in our journey of faith, we are learning. And I submit to the teachings of Jesus Christ. I submit to listening and reading his word. And what I'm sharing to you is something that I believe the Holy Spirit has brought to mind. And so, this may resonate with you. It may challenge you in different ways. But today we're going to talk about children of God. What is a child of God? And is everyone naturally a child of God? I want to explore that with you. I'm going to share some scripture with you. And I hope that you will feel challenged on this Friday as you make your way home what kind of week it's been, and looking forward to the weekend. But before we get into that, let, let me just commit this time uh, into prayer. And, uh, and don't close your eyes while you're driving. <laughs> Keep your eyes open, because you know what? You can pray with your eyes open. You can pray looking up. You can pray looking down. God hears us. He hears the heart of the penitent. And we are those children that want to talk to our Father. So let me commit this time to you and join me and say, Father, make the book live to me. Show me yourself. Show me myself. And show me my Savior. And make the book live to me. Amen. Well, let's get into this. Um, first of all, we can go into the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John is thought to be uh, one of the um, last Gospels that was written. And I think in some ways John uh, struggled. What would he say that hasn't already been said? But he identifies the source of everything. He identifies Jesus as the word that was from the beginning. And I want to start with a passage. I want to read it to you. And you can check it later in your Bible. Always read your Bible. It says in John 1 verse 3, that all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was nothing that was made was made. Let me read that again to you because the language is there for a reason that way. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing that was made was made. He's making a very strong effort to say here that everything that we know was created and that Jesus was from the beginning and all creation happened through him, the Godhead, the three in one, Jesus, Father God, Holy Spirit. So here's a question then, as we examine that point. You are certainly a creation of God. I mean, all things, it doesn't say some things, it says all things. Everything that was made was made through him. So we know that every animal, Everything that we observe in this world, everything that beguiles us, everything that entrances us, everything that impresses us, everything that challenges us, everything that we see, both good and bad, was created. Everything was created through him. Therefore, you and I are created through him. That makes us a creation of God. The Bible tells us in Genesis, we were made in his image. But being a creation of God, here's the question. Are you a child of God? Is there a difference? Am I splitting hairs here? Well, let's find out. Let's go a little bit further on this. Many of you, a lot of people identify as being Christian. 
And that's very, very in keeping with being non-Christian. You're a believer of God. I understand that. I'm a believer of God. I believe in God. But many other people believe in God too. But that doesn't make them a child of God or even a follower of Jesus Christ. When we say we're a Christian, what are we really saying? You know, when I was young, I was challenged by a youth uh, pastor one time. He said, if you were charged with the crime of being a Christian, if the allegation was made, if the indictment was leveled against you that you're a Christian and you had to go in court, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Think about that. Christian is a term we banter about quite easily, quite freely. What does it really mean? Well, what I've come to know in the last few years is that there is a much finer point that I would like to put on it. And that is, are you a Christian? Okay. But are you a follower of Jesus as well? Because many people, when Jesus walked the earth, were admirers of him. Many of the religious elite admired him. They, they spoke about him. And they identified him as having uh, you know, the, the signs and the attributes and the powers of a great prophet and teacher. But they were not followers of Jesus. In fact, they are the ones that put him on a cross. So, are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Jesus? But let's get to the point of this message that I want to share with you. What makes you and I a child of God? Is there a process? How do you become a child of God? These are questions I'd like to explore with you here. And I would say a good place to start is in the Gospel of John. I'm going to pull it up here. John 3. Um, this is the encounter between Nicodemus, who was, by any standard of the day, one of the religious elite. He was, as it says here, let's just read that, and then we can get into it. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark, take note of that, he had to come in the dark. One evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said. We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. And we can go on, but let's stop in there. Several things to note. Nicodemus, uh, a high-ranking religious leader, a Pharisee, nonetheless, goes in the cloak of darkness to visit Jesus. He's been observing Jesus from a distance for a long time. He's been an admirer of him. He has already heard about the signs and wonders and the healings. He'd already heard of Mary Magdalene, who had demons cast out of her and was healed. Nicodemus uh, tried to enter into that um, scene and tried to heal Mary as well, but he was unable to do that. He heard about Jesus. He knew about Jesus. He wanted to know more about Jesus. And instead of Jesus being flattered by the, the uh, beautiful uh, uh, you know, accoutrements of your, your miraculous signs or evidence that God is with you, Jesus goes right to the heart of the matter and says, Unless I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. There is another encounter also later in John where he encounters the religious uh, elite again. And they declare themselves to be descendants of Abraham. But Jesus encounters that and pushes back on that to actually identify them for who they really are. And uh, I'll just get to that. And, and it's in John 8, and I have it here. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. You see, biologically speaking, they were descendants of Abraham. And biologically speaking, and, and scripture identifies this, that we are children of our parents. We are descendants of our mothers and our fathers. That makes us naturally their children. 
whether we want to accept it or not. We are the children of our parents. And John talks about this in, again in First John. He says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not out of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. You see, folks, we are all descendants. We are all creations of God. The question is, are we children of God? And clearly, Jesus, when speaking to Nicodemus, lays the line down. He lays the line down and says, unless you are born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. This is where it gets real. You can go to church. I can go to church. As much and as often as I want to. And not be a child of God. I can be admirer of the teachings of Jesus. I can be a member of the church because I love the church. Heck, I might just like the coffee bar and the community that's in that church. And I sure like the music. That's all jazzed up, ready to go. But the question is, am I a child of God? Well, you know what? You spend a night in your garage. That doesn't make you a car. That's actually a quote from Franklin Graham. And it's true. Our association to God, our association to a church, our admiration of church and what it is and isn't, does it make us a child of God? It is so important, folks, that we be sure of what we believe because that is the evidence upon which we will be judged. And I tell you the truth, that it is so important that we know whether we are children of God. There is a uh, verse, and it's um, in Philippians, I believe. It says, Philippians 2, that we are to work out our faith in fear and trembling. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I have to be afraid of God? That fear that we talk about? No, it's not that servile fear that that we're not going to be accepted. It's the fear and the wonderment of knowing that we are children of a holy God. Holy has not yet been defined to us folks, but it will be one day. Moses encountered God, and the scriptures tell us that God spoke to him face to face. But even God, even God did not allow his holiness to be shown to Moses. And he held him in hiding in the cleft of a rock. And he said, I will pass by you. Paul encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. And a blaze of glory set about him that was so powerful that it caused Saul at that time to become blind. You see, Saul, he would have said he was a child of God. He was out there doing his thing and believing he was serving God. But Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? You see, Saul had to be reborn. He had to encounter Jesus. And he then became a child of God. And we know that, that Saul, who became Paul, is responsible for under the tutelage of, of God himself, wrote most of the New Testament. Here's my question. Are you a child of God? And how do you know that? Scripture is clear. Jesus speaking with Nicodemus identified it clearly. He said of water and spirit. We know many people who have not that been baptized. And that's the reference. But we also know that the spirit is far more important. To worship God. Them that worship God, worship him in spirit. It's so important that we know that we're children of God, that we're not merely admirers of him or even necessarily followers of him. But to be a child of him, of Jesus, to be a child of God is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God sent his only begotten son, John 3.16, 
for our sake. And Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. I've said this so often, I, I can't say it enough. For me to be a Christian, for me to be a follower of Jesus, for me to be a child of God, is to know that Jesus died for my sins, but more importantly, that he came back from the grave. And, and, and loved ones, I'm telling you the truth. If it weren't for a risen, resurrected, bodily form of Jesus, I would chuck Christianity as far as I could. Because it would have nothing to offer me that any one of the other great religious leaders of the world aren't saying about how to become a better person, about how to treat and love others. It's all in many other writings, but the one thing that defines us in Christianity is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nobody else has it. It's completely unique to us. And it is the hope in our hearts, those of us who name the name of Jesus, to know that we are children of God. And that one day, when we stand before our Creator God, and we all will, it says in the Bible, it's appointed unto man to live once and then the judgment and then the resurrection you see you can believe that you're going to lay in your grave your body will but your spirit is going to go on the question is where does it end up i maintain to you that the same three eternal questions still remain today where did that come from why am i here and where am i going for me, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he is the answer to everything. And the question is, those three questions, where did you come from? Why are you here? And where are you going? To answer that fully and in the best possible way is to know that you're a child of God. So let's look at that. Let's examine ourselves. Let's ask the Bible. Let's read our Bibles. Let's ask God to examine us. And to show us, as I prayed with you, show me yourself, show me myself, and show me my Savior. And that's what the Bible is capable of doing. If we're reading it, if we're applying for it, if we are earnest in our desires, God will reveal that to us all. In closing, let me share a thought. It's not in the Bible, but it's something that I've observed. God has no grandchildren. As much as we would love to believe that we can cozy up with God and that perhaps the faith of our parents and our grandparents has brought us to a point where we attend church regularly. Your parents' faith, your grandparents' faith will not be enough on that day because God has no grandchildren. He only has children. And we need to be born again. And we need to have that encounter with Jesus. The one that begs the question, what are you going to do with Jesus when you discover who he is and what he's done for you? In the scripture, it just comes to mind, of all the, of all the gospels that tell of the works of Jesus and the encounters he had, there's only really one man, I believe, that ever left the presence of Jesus sat, and it was the rich young ruler. Because when Jesus encountered, when he encountered Jesus, he, he knew he had a pretty good report card. He was pretty high. His GPA was right up there, maybe a 3.8, 3.9 on the religious scale. But the one thing he couldn't do was separate that which he valued so much from what he needed. And we should never hang on to that which we will ultimately have to give up. For me, I want to live in this world. I want to be unafraid. And I want to be confident in what Jesus did for me. And knowing that and being a child of God. Thank you all for watching. God bless you as you make your way home on this Friday. And as the Spirit leads, we'll have another episode here of TGI Faith. Thank God it's Friday. I hope you have a great weekend where you are.
and God bless you again.